yet again. Not that Chaos has not had a great game, but Agni is amazing. Yeah, those range stuns could really help change the way the team fights go. Instead of being so reliant on getting John Quay free in the fights and able to channel that full ultimate, they could have relied on a range DPSer. And again, they're going to give adapting Thor three games in a row, which, I mean, some players like it, some players don't like it, but you got to think, if they're going to go for it this many times, that he's just going to get more and more and more comfortable with each rep. I want to see them do something different. You know, the reason that Cloud9 fell to enemy, what, what, and rather Epsilon, wasn't picks. It wasn't because of Neath. It wasn't because of, you know, really Humbots. It was because they, they kept picking the same thing over and over. It was a Fenrir. And allowing adapting to adapt to their comp. That's what he does. But enemy's done the same thing. Exactly. Epsilon has done a great job this tournament in just picking differently and always, you know, giving the enemy a hard time in predicting exactly what they're going to pick. Who predicts Medusa mid? Epsilon. Well, yeah, that's that's exactly it. Epsilon has two or maybe three, like, discreetly different styles that they can play uh, in terms of the pick and banning phase. And it doesn't seem like anybody from North America came prepared with, you know, multiple different compositions. It seemed like, you know, going out of Super Regionals, everyone was kind of content to trade the same picks back and forth and play the same, you know, 15-16 god pool. But here, Epsilon... Uh, they're gonna put Medusa in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest difference between the regions. You know, uh, North America, we love our meta picks. We love Shink Tan Balone every game, you know, uh, Zon Kui, Isis mid every game, or Giannis every game, and Neath every game. So, yeah. I mean, that's the big difference here, and EU uh, is making their strategies work. Emily took a lot of damage there, a lot more than I think he was willing to take. Uh, I mean, with Sometimes you just bait yourself with that ability, right? When you try to disapparate, you're like, oh, I want to stun him. So you move forward and you take extra poke and then nothing happens. Yeah, the biggest thing is, you know, there's a three second window until it procs and you're like, okay, I could go in here. And it's like, when is the three seconds going to happen? You know, yeah. You take all this damage. Oh, dashing right through. Pinvion taking some archer damage here. It needs to be really careful. He's getting slow, but Emelito slightly off the mark with that stellar burst. Still a ton of damage coming out onto that Athena. That's going to start uh, burning through those health bots. Granted, Pain is sitting on three of them. Uh, now down to two. Raffer going into the jungle here. It looks like we'll group up with Adapting and Yaman. All right, it's important that Enemy does not give up a first blood to Adapting Thor before his ultimate again in this game. I mean, that's really been the key to success for the early game for Epsilon. And look at this. Over on the right side, they did the same thing. Out of the lane comes Salt Machine to team up with Adapting. Oh, I mean, rather... Oh, 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 what is this? Pain of Beyond blocked off. He needs to be very careful. Good taunt. Does he have the dash? Does he have the dash? He might not. Another first blood for Adapting. Oh, Bark! No. The commentator's curse strikes. Commentator's Curse indeed there. This game actually opens up the exact same way. Hunbots rotates to proxy between the Tier 2 and the Tier 1 tower on the order side to take the left side back camp there right as Adapting moves into the lane. And that's twice now that Adjust uh -oh. has found himself uh -oh. out of position. More in position you to don't far have a way out of this. Chaos in a lot of trouble here. He's going to stun to spin to win. He needed to save that stun until the spin it's was worth. out. He it's gets a return kill, but still, that's a 2-0 start for Adapting on Thor. And a 450 pot in the garbage. That's right, yeah. Now, did Deduce a load out with a red pot? Yeah, uh, I no, mean, that's did not transcendence. That, that was definitely worth for Chaos. Uh, you can see how powerful these walls are against uh, enemies' team comp. Chaos can't get out of it, and Paint Divion can't get out of it. Look, look for all the pressure to go on those two gods. Yeah, what Chaos does drop that pot, and as you mentioned, Brandis, the transcendence rush from Medusa, so she'll end up actually quite a bit, about five, six hundred gold ahead after that trade, even with the kill going to, well, enemies' Chaos mid laner. Dimmy. Gonna get some mana back from the Lurking in the Water Sobek Ultimate and also, well, some. explode a one wave. He's gonna get some of his mana back, right? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> back to full. He controls the lane again. Salt Machine without a blue buff. Probably gonna be looking to go back pretty soon. Well, you know, he's got, he's got plenty of gold in hand to, uh, to move into the teleport at his leisure. Looking to finish off those boots uh, where he's at right now. Just a couple hundred more gold to get him back to lane. Yeah, he's got, he's got the boots uh, ready now. He would have exactly enough, but he wants 300 more gold to get that teleport and control the lane. But if he uses it too early, or in fact, if he uses it too late, it's going to be very hard for him to rotate against the Sobek. Yeah, and it's the magical moment. The wards are starting to fall and adapting is starting to roam. Yeah, they really want to put pressure on this Neath. Again, Neath is one of the easiest hunters what? to gank in the game, no. especially for a Thor. Or they could go for Goku. No. No, not actually. Pain Beyond's not even beginning to rotate. Not actually, right? Chaos is underneath the tower, adapting. This is real? This is real. I got it. Yeah, Adapting's taking this one up. The Stone Shield coming through as well. Emelito now going to trade off. Wow. And it's a three and a half minute Gold Fury. They didn't even need mid. Mid didn't even rotate. Yamin stayed there to bait Chaos. And by the time they actually sniff this out, Adjust walks in to see the gold go right into the pocket. Well, the call was that Adapting is missing. You know, get underneath your towers because we don't have the ward coverage and Thor may be up. But instead, they just hate the map objective. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing there was the purple of spawn. So it's not out of the ordinary for the Hunter and support to leave the lane. In fact, it's so every game that Epsilon has gone and aggressed yeah. into the enemy purple buff. Exactly. So enemies call us, oh, don't worry, they're just doing their purple buff. They're just doing their purple buff. And by the time they actually realize it's taking too long, the gold period was already dropped.
Left side camp's gonna be going to enemy. A small win there after losing the Gold Fury. Yemen stuck under the tower at level six. Uh, but I'm sure is not too unhappy with the way things have progressed. The 3200 gold, that not only gives him his transcendence, but either a level of beads or, of course, the boots either. One big thing that Aurora was saying, you know, in the break between the games, it remember Aurora from, from the cast earlier. Now, do we not have enough mana, I don't think, to Wait, secure this? Wait, adapting so here. Oh, this is gonna be a fight. Adapting's gonna go up into the air, and he's gonna live for now. He's gonna make his way back to the tier two, but they will concede the blue buff. Will Epsilon as enemy's gonna clear out this right side jungle. But yeah, Roar was saying basically that enemy, I mean, the key to the success for them this whole tournament, and even into the Super Regionals, was Geb and Kepri. And, and instead they've picked and prioritized Athena in every game. That Gold Fury winds up not being too worth considering how long they were out of lanes and how much they've given up because they didn't back and heal correctly. You can see the experience difference is 2200, although not wave to wave in favor of enemy. Exactly, the thing is this early in the game, the waves tend to be the most valuable uh, component of XP and gold. So once Epsilon took the gold free, they all had it back. Enemy got a lot of waves and they were able to get that level advantage and then they pushed their advantage in invading Adapting's jungle. Still two to one. Epsilon leads uh, smallly. I mean, the gold difference really isn't that big. I, honestly, I feel like enemy has the lead here. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe they have the uh, they have the experience lead. Absolutely, the gold is very very even. But Epsilon, I think, is winning the mind games right now with that early gold fury. It's still a three level advantage across the board for enemy, which could result in something big. I want to see it just take the fight out pretty soon. Yeah, and the biggest thing is XP is much more valuable than gold in the early stages of the game. Scaling is through the roof. Scaling you're is gaining insane. health, you're gaining damage on your abilities. I mean, there's a lot to it. And with that, enemy does have a small advantage here. I would like to see them use it. Adjust ult should be coming up pretty soon. Well, the boots are, ooh, double tap adapting. Uh, yeah, he's going to be leveling up that hammer yet again. 4-1-1-1 build out of the level 7 Thor. Um, look, uh, looks like Yemen, five stacks now on the Transcendent. So that's a pretty big power spike. Another 1,250 gold he'll need to be able to get into the boots for a second one. Yeah. Besides that, boots done across the board. Yeah, and the enemy already brought the game back to even in gold. They pushed their advantage in XP. They invaded the two buffs. They got mid harpies, and then they got their buffs. Game's even. Gold did not work out at all. It was a cool play, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about the farm. That experience difference is paramount. Well, guys, if you are just joining us here, six and a half minutes in, it's two to one in favor of Epsilon, and they're up two to nothing in this game. It, I'm sorry, in this matchup. It's a best of five or a first to three. Epsilon is on championship point versus the North American top contender in enemy, and the game is very, very even through the first seven minutes here. It looks like there will be a skirmish breaking out on the left side of the map near the Gold Fury. And Melito placing the Radiance down, small amount of healing, plus, of course, getting himself uh, to have maximum heat. This is going to ensure an extra amount of damage and attack speed, but he doesn't use it. It will fall off. Left side purple to fall as the invade begins, but I don't think Adapting's willing to give this one up for free. Yeah, I mean, love what the enemy is doing. They're finally putting the pressure on Epsilon. Epsilon right now is on the back foot, and this is getting a just ahead. And it just needs to be ahead. We've seen what happens when Adjust does not get ahead early. It generally doesn't work out for them too much. Raffer taking a lot of damage for us to use that stone shield early. Doesn't even lose the whip. So hard to fight this dual lane out of the Epsilon Beautiful. team. Beautiful. Nice backflip coming up from Vishim there. It shades what we saw from him in the past. But with Emilito going to the Disapparate and Raffer using the stone shield, it's very, very hard for them to do much about it. There's going to be the Fear No Evil, and it looks like it's going to be a return kill. Nicely done. Wait. No, it's the Soul Ultimate saving Raffer and dealing the damage in return. Yammy getting credit for the kill on the Pain to Beyond. And Yammy going to continue to move forward, but I don't think they find another kill on the back of this. I thought that was definitely going to go in favor of enemy, especially after Yammy didn't get much off the stone gaze. This is going to give them enough room to move forward, clear this wave, and get back to mid. You can actually see Dimmy controlling the mid wave right now to ensure he's getting multiple points of experience. Yammy back to the jungle here, but won't find much for his rotation. Yeah, that was a bit interesting. It, it seemed like their adjust was confused after he used his ultimate. He stopped using his abilities. He stopped damaging the Geb, and Geb got away, and they got a return kill. Perhaps a communication breakdown. Oh. Bottom side, camp's being taken here. Yaman rotates over. Uh, he'll notice that the uh, right side mids have been taken as well. Uh, right side blue buff has respawned, and we're going to see, it uh, looks like Salt Machine just kind of peeks at it to see if they're doing it. We did see rotations towards the right side. He'll notice that it's free for now. Can try to, troll, uh, try to control Dimmy. Yeah, a ton of that experience gap is actually between the Hunbots and the Thor. You'll notice that Thor is ahead in farm with the 2-0-1 oh, KDA, but is behind in experience to the Hunbots. Yeah, I love the rotation by Rapper here. They knew the blue buff was coming up and they wanted to guarantee it. Yeah, they lost both of their buffs in the last rotation. Remember, uh, Just is pretty deep here. A little surprised that he's actually going to uh, play that risky just to get a little extra chip onto the Sobat. Adapting may look to save Yaman here. No, going to retreat back. They'll pick up the speed buff for free, it seems. 
Yeah, no problem taking this one here. And yeah, I mean, I do like that adaptation from uh, Epsilon to go ahead and make sure they can secure this next round of buffs on the right side. I'm sure that uh, Kenneth was giving them hell for not getting his speed buff. <laughs> Melito uh, take, taking the red. This is going to go to him. We know that him and Yamin uh, like to make sure they're getting, you know, the normal buffs, but swap. That way they can get the purple onto the hunter and the red onto the mage. Good play by enemy here going for the gold free. They didn't get the buffs on the right side, but what they did is they poked out Epsilon a lot. CC immunity, good damage, but no follow from adapting. However, Emilito forcing adjust away immediately. There's no way he can go back in adapting. Try it for it. Could be in some trouble here. Needs another crit. The oh! What in the world? Ooh. That was the first hit. World Weaver gonna find uh, a return. Sure World Weaver was best used there. It looked like Pain of Yama's gonna be able to run that one down either way. Salt Machine has rotated in. Sobek nowhere to be found in the fight for now. Now Dimmy's gonna come in. Tail, no, the ability's just not being that successful. Chaos continuing to surge forward, but the separate is there for them. Alito, the burst coming through, it is gonna be enough, but not before Chaos will take a spill as well. Yamin's here, now. but he doesn't have a lot of mana. Yeah, Yamin's shooting here as well. Dimmy's just forced to kind of zone out for the team now as enemy will get the better Whoa, of that trade for the moment. Dashing away is Dimmy. The lurking in the water is doing a ton of damage there. But still, it's enemy coming out ahead in that trade. The biggest thing there was the patience in on Chaos with the Zonkui. He waited for Soul to use her vap or her separate, and then he popped his ultimate and chased her down. Left side mid camp's gonna be taken. Gold Fury will stand once again. It seems no team willing to go for it. A three for two exchange uh, favoring enemy doesn't quite favor them enough to go for the, uh, I think, more dangerous objective on the map. They'll just go for some mid camps, extra experience, extra gold. This adapting rotates back in to just try to get some experience. Yeah, really impressive that enemy's been able to continue to build on this experience advantage. Yeah, the gold remains marginally the same. It's only about 300. I mean, a level of beats might spell the difference, but so far... I mean, that's spread out as 60 gold across five players. Though. I mean, it's like it's not factoring in majorly into these fights, but that 3,000 experience is... You know, we were talking about Amir's health scaling at 104, but that doesn't mean that other characters aren't scaling effectively with HP and levels. We are looking at probably a minimum of about 60 or 70 HP per level, even on the Assassins. Adapting finds a two-man stun and a ton of poke out on the Pain of Yon. He's actually liable oh, to go down here as Adapting's going to go up into the sky. Cataclysm and Bottom. the follow-up Anvil of Dawn as the damage starts to come out. That's it's been one. pretty decent AoE from enemy in return, but That's they're going to pick off two targets right away on the side of Epsilon as their single target damage just comes together on top of that Geb Cataclysm. Uh, looks like Vedium trying to just clear up some waves. He's going to bring it. Looks like Pain to be on back in with his ultimate. Uh, Pain, full health, could dive the back line here, but it's a 4v2, full health versus not. Dimmy, and again, another mischarge prey as he gets taunted. Decent damage, but not enough to truly deter, I would say. Yeah, but it's, it's bought some time. In the meantime, Salt Machine does take a tier one on the right side. We'll continue pushing this wave in, forcing adapting over here as well. It does look like Epsilon is going to move away from the gold fear. Yet again, enemy has scared them off, and now enemy will be the ones starting to aggress into the Lady in Gold. This is visible. They know this is happening. Yeah, maybe they want to try to bait enemy into thinking they told, but no, now I'm a little... Yeah, they just don't need to contest right away. It's only Bedium and and Pain to be on, on it. One of the supports, maybe both of the supports to fall here. Yeah, I'm not sure why Pain chose to go in for that. I don't know that that was entirely worth considering Raffer was level 8. Emilito's soul ultimates have been really, really on point, but, uh, you know, he does expend a, a massive teamfight AoE ultimate in a, exchange for a single life, and now the gold fears we started up again from enemy, and they have a bit of a power play here, uh -oh. but adapting's going to turn the corner yeah, big. And this, and this time around, Osiris is in the teamfight. Emilito pretty low, activates the Radiance and the Corpurial form to try to heal and get out of that one. Once again, the Gold Fury gets pulled. One of the longest engagements we've seen at this a camp for oh quite some time. Oh my god, the damage from that Mjolnir's attunement on adapting with Jotun's Wrath done in the max level. It just, it just crushes on Quay there. Judgment Tether going to be used by Osiris, taking a ton of poke in return. The stun from adapting, yes, going to lock out Salt Machine from making it back to that tier one, but no follow-up from Epsilon. And it uh, looks like they're going to concede the Gold Fury finally. It's been a long engagement here at the center camp. Yeah, the biggest thing there is, even though Epsilon was at a disadvantage, they do such a great job of poking with Thor that forces enemy off the, off the Gold Fury. And Dimmy using his charge prey to get to back to right lane as fast as possible, wants to make sure he's not missing in this experience. He's level 14 and behind right now. He's also out of mana. Yeah, Salt Machine's come up pretty big here in this game so far as Osiris in terms of his farm. Uh, we heard we heard earlier, you know, Osiris kind of uh, maybe considered the best warrior lane dominator that's currently in the game. I believe uh, that was that man talking about that a bit earlier, and um, and indeed that seems to be the case here. Zero zero and three for Salt Machine, but uh, ahead in net worth and experience over the Sobek. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, can he translate that lead into big team fights, big objective games? Whereas Dimmy here, he's the one with the two kills. Osiris really hasn't made his presence felt. A yeah, skill. I mean, once upon a time, you used to see, you know, chin size and, 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 or an executioner come out on Osiris to really transition into that damage build. But, I mean, these days, you're lucky to see an Iqbal in the sixth slot. So, 
I mean, Osiris as a damage dealer is not going to be too threatening until much, much later in this game. Adapting on the bottom side, clearing up red. Uh, Yamin's here. Is he going to pick it up? Are they going to save it for Soul? He's going to grab it. Soul has the purple. Uh, Shiro tends down four man split on the backhand. Yeah, it looks right. like they haven't really turned the corner yet to where they want to start swapping who gets what buff. I think Soul, you know, needs probably at least one uh, base attack speed item or the Polynomicon to make that red buff more worthwhile. Exactly. They're definitely waiting for Soul to get the Polynomicon. Ooh, wow. How in the world? It's just that acid spray plus Mjolnir's attunement poke damage. And this is out. why they gave the red to Medusa for that extra burst damage on her abilities. Gold Fury again getting gestured here as Raffer walks towards. It looks like the vision still belongs to Blue. Sentry Ward's in the inventory uh, for a lot of the members of Enemy. In fact, Adjust, Chaos, and Pain to Beyond all have them. Uh, it looks like Chaos places his down forced at the top side, and you'll notice it was pinged out by the boys in blue. This game just feels like Epsilon's waiting to go off. I mean, they're just waiting to pick that one spot where they're going to go completely all in. Enemies line up in comparison's a little bit more difficult, I think, to pull off here because they, again, they have to make room in these team fights for Chaos to channel that ultimate fully, which means that Adjust needs to get a big ultimate of his own, and Salt Machine needs to fully disrupt the back line. Yeah, and one of the interesting things to note is the build path of both support players. I Raffer went for max actives right away, where Ping Divion doesn't have a single active yet. Yeah, and take a look at Raffer there, just sitting on uh, basically a vest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got cooldown boots and oh. almost no defensive items. Adjust very smart to blink away when he did. Almost took a big shot. A wasted ward as it gets dropped down and not picked off. Another one will be placed, and this time belonging to Blue. They're out of sentry wards in the inventory, but uh, Just still manages to have when they should belong. Uh, the vision what fight should belong to them, but they're starting the gold fury so haphazardly. Yaman in the front line there, uh, kind of uncharacteristically for your hunter, but still zoning out fairly effectively. Salt Machine into the backside. Judgment Tether looking pretty good. Up in the air will be going Thor. Uh -oh. That will stop the Judgment Tether from coming out. And this is a big Jonquay ultimate, but can they block him out? Salt Machine isolated here. Yaman kept alive just barely by Stone Shield. He's going to have a very hard time. Lacerate. No! Two kills. Whoa. The spirit flail over the top. And Salt Machine continues in underneath the tower. Dimmy is here. Tail Whip could be enough to keep him locked in. Yes! Indeed, he will go down, but not before fighting. Also, Wait, in the back line, Emilito is back. He's trying for damage on the Pain to Beyond. He looks big all coming out, but he's trying for more. He's very low health. He's not going to get much more than that. Yeah, he's going to go into the incorporal form here, but enemy finally comes up big in one of these team fights. They get the Jonquay ultimate they were looking for, but porting into this tower. Chaos is going to be in a lot of trouble. Who is it? It's adapting with a stun. The double tap, and down you go. You're done, son. The biggest thing in that team fight was finally Salt Machine making his presence felt. He tethered three people. He took out two carries and they won the team fight. Adapting, clearing up in the left lane. You'll see the goal difference, still about 750 experience, still about 37 to 4,000 at any given time. Uh, not much has been done, I would say, over the past seven or eight minutes. We've kind of been stagnating in this one area. Ooh, all right, just gonna be very mad about that attempt at that steal. Yeah, the interesting thing is we've had a lot of team fights, but each team fight has been so close that no team has really been able to break it open. More damage. Adust, uh, just getting much more uh, out of this, though. It doesn't seem like adapting is chunking 50 or 60 percent of his health anymore. It's getting closer to a third now. Uh, but he's not going into defense. He's going right into crit. Uh, yeah, but on, on the side of, uh, of adapting here, he's going to have that mail of renewal up pretty shortly. I mean, he did find that kill onto the enemy solo later and got some nice free farm time over here in this left lane. He's getting closer, closer to this item, and, and then there's really no. Well, there's no built-in anti-heal, and, and it doesn't seem anybody's going to be itemizing into anti-heal on the side of enemy. It'll be very hard to lock down Thor, uh, getting those uh, the benefit of those Geb shields as well with the Mail of Renewal. Yeah, the gold one lead thing has shrunk a bit, only about four to five hundred gold now, as opposed to the eight. Yeah, and one thing I would really like to see is enemy to push the pace of this game. Right now, they have a huge advantage in their solo laner, being level 18. It does a lot of damage. Oh, Pain finds a two-man taunt here, and they're going to look to pile in some damage. Jalman's going to dash away. Heavenly Jilly popped as well. That should be the end of this engagement for the moment, but fairly low on mana and HP between adapting and Yaman. Enemy could be thinking about sieging this tier one. I think they are. You can actually see Vidium uh, start to rotate into the jungle. He's going around topside to meet up with the rest of his team, and uh, Raffer is going to spot most of this. I'm expecting some kind of contest, but if he steps out of position, he's going to get destroyed. Fitting that Epsilon here in their championship point match is going to be riding the back of adapting. Five, one, and three on the Thor. Emilito in a lot of trouble here now on his soul. We'll get into the disapparate form, and it is going to try to make it out. Catacombs the base. Spend it as well. Adjust very, very low. He's forced out, and somehow Emily to on the back of the captain, I Raffer will survive that engagement. Yeah, Adjust is going to watch that video later on and just yell at himself for not ulting there. I mean, that was an absolutely free kill, and he didn't take it. Yeah, I mean, another one HP shield by Raffer gave Soul enough time to get into her corporal form and just walk out of there. This. There's no way he's getting away from this one. Enemy finding a big kill there. You know, and if Epsilon goes on to win this game, probably the hardest thing that the analysts will have to do this entire weekend is figure out who the MVP is on this team. Oh, my God. 
I mean, Yemen uh, adjust. I mean, you know, I say adjust. I forgot. Wrong team. I mean, he's just playing so well. Maybe not this game entirely, but his set against Paradigm yesterday was so good. Yeah, I mean, you're just looking at it, just so many great players here uh, involved in this match, and, and especially on the side of Epsilon, all of these guys uh -oh. I think are, are contenders for the best player in the tournament. Salt Machine taking some decent damage there, but the Tether actually winds up keeping Yaman honest. They're going to try to burst this down, it seems. Uh, Pain to be on backs of the base, but still has a presence with Defender of Olympus. There it is. Wow, they'll use the Defender of Olympus ultimate as well. They're going to try to burst down Yaman. They'll get some decent damage out of that, plus the Psycho Crusher from Osiris. Dimmy takes a decent amount of poke, but he's not too worried with the Sobek. He's very, very resilient, still sitting over well over 1,000 HP, even though he's down to under a third. The stun comes out from adapting to try to slow them down. It will only isolate Pain to Beyond, which I do not think is that going to be enough. No, Blinking break. Black in with two now. His enemies, they want to re-engage here. Can they burst out Dimmy in time? Indeed, they can. But here comes the oh, return. No! It's a huge ultimate coming out of Yama. Can they find the kill onto adjust? Yes, of course they can. Raffer now going to try to make his way out. Slow down by the sickle. He'll have a rollout momentarily, but it will not be in time. Enemy does get the better of that trade. They're going to try to transition this into a Gold Fury as well. They have four versus three here. No ultimates available across the board. And it doesn't look like anyone... Actually, no, it does look like they're going to make the uh, attempt here. Yaman on the right side going for buffs, but adapting, not willing to give this up. Let's see. I mean, it, it, in theory, Mjolnir's Attunement is the highest burst damage ability on the map right now that's still up, with the exception of maybe both hits of the shield wall, but they don't have it fast oh. enough. Mjolnir's Attunement off the mark, and adapting is going to be forced to ult out of this one. Yeah, it was a good play by Adapting there. There was no reason for him not to try to contest that. He had his Get Out of Jail free card in his ultimate. Well, all things sold here, guys. Through 20 minutes and 47 seconds, it's 11 to 11. Dead even in terms of kills, but enemy is up in gold and experience now as well. You see a quick pause coming out from the players here as uh, they look to sort something out, guys. How, I mean, what's the key to victory? I mean, how can enemy make it back into this one? I'm oh, sorry, make, make it through this one well, and into the fourth game. They just got to keep doing what they're doing. They're baiting out a lot of abilities on uh, Epsilon's side, and then they're re-engaging with the Zonkui alt and really making them pay. I want to see more pressure from Adjust. I mean, there were a few times where Adjust just didn't ult or he ulted late. I feel like if he would initiate on these team fights and let Pain be the reinitiator as he uses his jump to get out, sure. I think that would be much more effective. Three kills have been dropped so far. Exactly. You know, in the other series, Adjust has seemed so sure of himself. We, you know, we've been calling out his name a lot because he's making all these clutch plays. But in this, in this series, he seems a little bit hesitant with his ability. Yeah, I it's totally agree quiet. with that. Yeah, I mean, he, he definitely seems a little bit timid. You know, maybe it's the land nerves. Maybe it's the uh, the land sickness. Who knows, man? It's always it's always something. The nerd flu goes around easily at these things. And, well, all things told here, enemy at least in a good position in this game to try to take it to the fourth. I mean, let's talk, let's talk like actual keys to victory here. The objective play has been a little bit sloppy in this game, I think, from both teams. And we've seen really, really long gold fury engagements continuing on now into this third game. It seemed to benefit Epsilon, and what's a little worrying some here is that this game seems to be on the same track as game two, where enemy keeps it very, very close, will pull ahead by a few thousand gold here from, from about the 20 to 27 minute mark, and then it kind of comes down to can they finish or will Epsilon surge back? Yeah, the biggest thing here is enemy needs to play discipline. In the last game, they did have a small lead and they pushed it too hard, diving tier twos, doing gold fears when they were half HP, half mana. If they can avoid those kind of small mistakes, they can take this game. But as we've seen, the longer the game goes, the less Sean Quay becomes important. You know, the, yeah. the scaling he the gets from his power passive. is what really is, is what, what falls off for him. Right, well, I mean, the passive isn't as effective. You know, those protections are much more effective in the early game sure, because sure. they're a static number and not percent. The late game damage isn't as effective as the shells and more defense come out. I think they need to be quicker. They need to be more precise in their engagements. And I don't, I don't want to see them be patient. I want to see them rush this down and lock, lock adapting away, force him to make decisions he doesn't want to make because when you give him the pace setting he's going to take it now do you guys think that enemy has improved enough from game two to take down this game three because like i mentioned earlier in, at the end of game two was that you know game one to game two there's that small adjustment and you see in game two okay look they seem to have a better game plan going game two to game three it's looking like they've improved a little bit more but is it going to be enough i mean it's usually in situations like this you think okay a fourth game enemy probably wins but can they put it together now instead of just going for that incremental you know experience game can they really like show something new here with these kind of old and tired picks yeah, I mean, what Enemy really, really needs to do here is ride the back of that Osiris. Right now, he's yep. so far ahead of everyone else. They need to pressure his side of the map, pressure the jungle of Epsilon, let him not feel comfortable, okay. and try to take objectives off that. 
And I, I like the Osiris pick, though. This has been very strong. There's been so much strength for them going, like, for when they went into the Tier 2, the double kill with the Spirit Flail, and then he continues to dive. Maybe a little bit more patience from Salt Machine. Everyone else needs to get more aggressive. On Epsilon, it's just they have two characters that are very squishy and easy to gank. I mean, Medusa's dash is easily interrupted. It's a three-second charge up for the corporeal form she's very susceptible to death i mean they have to be more aggressive on both sides yeah they've had a hard time really getting to the back lines and finding that soul really it's also much they've had hard trouble getting back there they've had trouble dealing with rapper maybe they need to pay a little bit more attention to where that geb is lock him down when they look for these kills as well because soul and the deuces they don't have a tremendous amount of hp their problem isn't necessarily killing the target it's preventing the stone shield from saving them exactly yeah i mean it always seems like rappers in the perfect spot to get that one hp yeah, yeah. geb shield save Ow. and then they they just walk out, you know, but he has been paying the price though. He has fallen a few times this game, so enemy's really making him pay. Do you think that enemy can win this? Yeah, I, I mean, think they can. Lead, I mean, they're right? sitting with an advantage, yeah, at 20 minutes. I mean, Smart Money says they win this game, but we saw last game makes me a little bit nervous, guys. What do you think out there in the audience? Let me hear you make some noise. You think Epsilon is gonna go on to be the Smite World Champion? I see a lot of blue in the crowd. Yeah, there seems to be uh, some good support for those guys, but who of you out there in Twitch chat or in the audience are voting for Enemy to push this into a fourth game? I think Enemy loud. takes it. That sounds like uh, the, the crowd a little bit ex expecting Epsilon to go ahead and move on and find this, uh, this victory here and bring the first world championship home to Europe. Well, launch tournament. Not a world championship. That doesn't count, that doesn't count. It's right. an Atlantic championship. <laughs> <laughs> Young Bay sitting somewhere like, I won that tournament. Yeah, as a Malaysian, he's like, I was international. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to get a ring today, maybe, yeah? Yeah, maybe. This rings, if you guys haven't seen them, uh, both trophies, medals, and rings going to the players here. They'll be uh, well adorned if they are able to take this one down on the side of Epsilon. Uh, the money is so important, you know, the, the fame of being the world champion. But, I mean, for me, it's just, I, I want to grab that hammer, man. Like, I, that, ha that trophy is the most important thing to me. Yeah, I mean... It's at this level of game, you know, or, or stage in your careers that you, you put so much time and effort into it. It's really not about the money. What it is is proving that all that hard work you put in and dedication was for something. You are the best team in the world, and nothing beats that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Epsilon's really, you know, they've had that path. They've had a lot of trial and tribulation on their path to the World Championship here. I mean, we go back to Rapper getting suspended from the game, which resulted in Epsilon not qualifying at the end of the last split, right? And then they make it into the third split, and now they've qualified for Worlds. And it seemed like, you know, there was always some doubt with this roster of, you know, could they keep it together? Could they stay, you know, kind of on top of their game? And they, they drop a game in the regular season of Fnatic, but... What's interesting for them is that it wasn't kind of the beginning of a slide in which they start slumping and they start looking like a different team. They really kept it together. I, I like. I mean, I think that's kind of the same thing for Enemy too. It's a, it's a yeah. roster. Like, can they keep it together? Are these players good enough? Right. I mean, these were four players that were generally unknown. Yeah. Oh yeah. A moneyball team. Yeah. They're both moneyball teams. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, a little you know bit what more. To do. Yeah. Well, I'm just hey, <laughs> on, on that topic. You know, actually, Enemy. I, I play a lot of ranked. I, I, I know a lot of players. I didn't really know exactly who was on enemy. And, you know, they had a, a decent performance during the SPL. But then at LAN, they really turned it up. I don't know what yeah. they did, whether it was the boot camp, whether it was their coach, but their picks and bands were on point. They developed some kind of strategy that worked for them. And, you know, here they are. Now it comes finals. down to can they adapt that strategy into something bigger and better, right? Because they came up with the strategy that works. It took them through Super Regionals. It took them to the final game but it hasn't seemed to be enough to topple Epsilon. What can they do? I mean, what adjustments can they make? No, they don't they want make? to adapt, they want to adjust. Right, okay, yeah, yeah, they want to adjust to Epsilon. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you're right, uh, all things sold, right? Is it, is it shutting down adapting? Is that the key here? It's so far, it seems to be, but in this game, I'd be more worried about Yaman and Emilito. I mean, both of those guys are on carries. I mean, they're pretty susceptible to ganks. Yeah. We've already seen some defense come out from adapting. They got to take down the damage. Well, that's a good point. I mean, are we liking the late game better for Epsilon in this contest with the double hunters? If they yeah, can get yeah, there. No, they do. They have Soul. Soul is one of the biggest damaging late game carries that there is in the game. You know, backed by a hunter, it's going to be Should tough be for enemy. Well, guys, some of the words you've been waiting to hear. Let's go ahead and move ourselves back into the game here as uh, it's going to be the conclusion of game number three, enemy versus Epsilon. Championship point for the boys in blue. Continues on at 11 to 11. Just to catch you guys up, for those of you watching around the world, let's go to the graphs. Well, you got 5,000 experience and 2,800 gold in favor of enemy 
eerily familiar to what we saw at this point in the last game as well. It comes down now to objective play from both teams. Can this next Fire Giant break the game wide open for enemy, or will Epsilon come up with another big team fight? Yeah, I mean, at this stage of the game, respawn timers are starting to get long. One small mistake will cost the other team the Fire Giant, and most likely all their towers after that. Let's be sure to highlight Salt Machine here. A three-level advantage over Sobek. Now two levels as Dimmy does just ding 18, and uh, a, a large amount of net worth as well about 1500 or so a bet i would have lost we'll go to the damage charts and you'll notice osiris slightly below sobek wow yeah it's only like 140 but i mean i still well, it's, would it's, not it's, have you know it. some of those multi-target sickening strikes in these fights oh we're gonna have a fight breaking out here on the left side there's gonna be a port in as well from dimmy he's gonna be a little bit too late That's but trouble. here comes adapting gonna be able to chase this one down the soul ultimate is on the mark Panavion in a bit of trouble here as yaman is right hot on his tail the dot should be enough to take him down indeed it is in will come salt machine adjust on the back line looking for something he has an ult opportunity, but I think they just took too long to get on this side of the map. Epsilon, like that man said, that's a long respawn timer for Pain and Beyond, though he does have a way back into lane very quickly. Yeah, Epsilon is just so quick at rotating. You know, enemy said, okay, uh, Emelito's alone. Let's try to aggress on him for a little bit, and they paid the price. How do you feel about the runic shield here on Osiris? Oh, absolutely. It's going to shut down attack speed for everyone on the other side of the teams. And then, of course, reducing magic damage for their three core. I think that's a really good play. But here's the issue with what enemy has drafted into this Epsilon lineup. That Soul Polynomicon Pen Boots build takes down the towers very, very easily. Even the shortest seed situation is going to take 50% of your tower's health. And you see this, uh, both the uh, outside lane tier ones are liable to go down to the Soul even with the smallest window. Only a 2,000 gold difference between the team's enemy with a small lead uh, needs to start pressuring. Uh-oh, Pain of Yon coming in. It's not oh, going to look, they want to isolate the Neath here now. And, and, and of course, the Athena on her back as well, slowing down this push for now. The wave clear is pretty good here with the Soul and the Medusa from range. So it's going to be very hard for enemy to get those pot shots in on the tower. A full 5v5 grouping here in the center, uh, bottom center part of the map. I don't see enemy continuing this pressure, despite the fact that they do still have a small lead. Yeah, I mean, Epsilon really doesn't want to fight right now. What they want to do is they want to be able to farm up their penetration items. Medusa needs to finish her Executioner. Soul needs to finish his Obsidian Shard, and then they can start looking to team fight and, and taking them. Do you think the Obsidian Shard over the Spear of the Magus in this particular situation? Yeah, I think he's going to go into uh, Obsidian Shard because he went for Pen Boots. He wants to, he, he's playing, he's building for his two damage. He's not building for auto attack. It's definitely been the favorite build for Emily too on his soul oh. as well. And, and really, it's only Sobek to follow up in the magic damage category. They're actually still giving the red buff to Yam and uh, note the build, you know, still pretty high damage. But with the Polynomicon, I would have expected it going to her. Well, I mean, it just indicates to me that they want that uh, that guaranteed poke out of the acid spray versus the damn near guaranteed poke out of soul, right? <laughs> I was but uh, say. yeah, but, but still, I mean, the code is a little bit more reliable. Plus, it's an instant uh, application of the damage versus that kind of delayed damage. So, um, this is who they're relying on uh, specifically for the wave clear. It appears. I love this Neath build, by the way, Zab. Check it out. I mean, selling off the starter item, getting the execution, now going to crit with a decent amount of attack speed, and then of course tankiness with the soul leader. I think this is like covering a lot of bases. Yeah, I mean, he just, he really wanted to get his penetration item on. You know, he didn't know when the next team fight would be. And if he was 500 gold down, you know, before getting it, it's worth selling your starting item to pick up the pen item. Yeah, I mean, uh, almost the same thing. You'll see him starting the life blade here, but a little bit of ways. I mean, only 600 gold down. It's oh, combos from Cataclysm the Cataclysm onto two, the knock up on the Salt Machine as well. Judgment Tether comes out. The Neath Ultimate going to come through as well. World Weaver going to be blocked up by I Raffer. The issue there is that they are so trying to stop this World Weaver from hitting their carry that they all took a Spear of Flail. <laughs> yeah, a couple extra hundred damage going the way of Salt Machine there as uh, the team stacks up. But no more damage coming out on to Yaman. He's going to be probably uh, begging Soul to leave a couple of those creeps standing so he can lifesteal some. Over on the left side, Gold Fury about to spawn, but a major grouping on the right with very little to gain here. Uh, top side blue buff just getting taken. Right side uh, bottom blue buff are going to be taken as well. Yeah, with the Gold Fury coming up, this is enemy's chance to push their lead. This is their chance to break the game open. I really want to see them get vision control around the Gold Fury, force Epsilon to start face checking it and make plays. Yeah, getting that Athena to dash in and find that two-man taunt as they try to turn the corner and spot if the gold fear is being picked up could be the key to success here for enemy. They do still enjoy a, uh, a moderate lead as well in the gold and experience department now through 26 minutes. But they are down two games to nil here in the best of five. I wouldn't have expected both Adjust and Chaos to be riding in the bottom five of damages. You know, early game Hunbots and Jean Quay. Look at that.
Yeah, Zhang Kui, uh, you know, he's, he's gone. His, his buildup is a little bit more conservative than what you might normally expect here. Uh, that ward going to be cleaned up, in fact, by the two members of enemy before they come in. Dimmy's going to come in too late now on the Sovic and is liable to fall here. Although it will come adapting as well to the back line on to Vichium. Seems to be the target of choice. The wall is going to be there as well to stall them out, but no more rallying in from Epsilon. It will be a clean gold fury by enemy. That was a very important one, but considering the gold spike had come down a little bit, and you'll notice right back up to the 3,500 where they spiked at before. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what I wanted to see enemy do. They're pushing their lead. They're taking the fights when they know they're stronger. And it was a bit interesting that Epsilon seemed like they were out of position, seemed like they didn't know that this was happening. But, you know, as soon as adapting dunked, there was really no follow-up. I mean, is it, is it maybe just a little bit of uh, lack of wherewithal coming out of that pause? You know, they, they, the comms get a little changed up, and... All of a sudden, enemy is able to sneak this gold fury. Dibby, of course, his first port in was interrupted. Maybe that indicates a little bit more about uh, of why that went so wrong. Exactly. That could have been a call. Oh, my port was interrupted. My port was interrupted. Let's back off. Let's back off. Uh, speaking of ports in, uh, Salt Machine going to bring Pain to be on the back line. It looks like the speed buff was stolen away successfully as Salt Machine begins to swing into Dimmy. Uh, you'll notice that Midgardian Mail trying to slow him down for a bit. They're going to fling Salt Machine back. Decent damage, but I don't think this is going to be... is way out of this fight as well. This is a 5v4 for now. The Souls coming out onto Salt Machine, dealing a moderate amount of damage here as well, adapting through the wall with the stun is good. Can they secure the kill on Assault Machine? Doesn't matter, it just does go down to Emilito. On the backside, still looking for this kill on Assault Machine is Dimmy. One more sickening strike should do it. Can he find, can anyone kill this guy? This is a let it go situation, I think. But his team has been baited so hard by the result. Look at this, they've already gotten two. A uh, bad wall this time from adapting, slows his team down. Vichium looks like he should be the target. Double tap not to hit. Backflip off the beads from the cooldown. Dimmy is still chasing Salt Machine. He really wants this kill, I mean, but the damage is just not really coming out from the sub. He can't dive this tower. But he's happy to just isolate Salt Machine completely out of his fight. The rest of the team does fall oh, as Salt no. Machine is forced to abandon them. And all of a sudden, the game is right back in Epsilon's hands. Fire Giant. I mean, why not? They're going to go right for it right away. They still have two Hunters with a massive amount of damage. Yeah, great presence of mind for Epsilon to know that Osiris Salt was down. And Dimmy, he stayed in the fight even though it was 3v1. He forced him to back, plug the Osiris in, and they uh, won the team fight. I've seen crazier things. Just Spirit saying. Flail, yeah, I mean, it, it's unlikely it's going to seal it there. He actually did have an opportunity as uh, Yaman was knocked up with the best first on the squad for this game, but still, nonetheless, that. it's Fire Giant at 28 and a half minutes for Epsilon, and all of a sudden, they shoot right back up next to enemy. Somehow, they have an experienced lead at 2,400 when we're, they were down, like, almost 6,000, and look at the gold lead. 600 in favor of enemy is not going to spell an even route against a Fire Giant buff. Yeah, and, you know, actually, one more thing about that team fight is it just thought he had a free kill on the Medusa, he went in and he used his ultimate, but Medusa had the presence of mind and reaction time to use her ultimate. And since it's a channeling ability, she was able to just walk out of the Humbot Salt and burst him down. Pain of Beyond has actually done 8,300 damage, uh, slightly more than the Geb, which is to be expected. But the issue is that he's within 500, 600 damage of his jungle, Just, who's normally riding the top of the charts. Where has it just been this game? It's well, they're going to live and die by the Humbots, it seems. Yeah, or, or Sir Cat. I mean, it's, it's been tough for him. He went for a very, you know, assassinous build where he has no physical protection. He's going in thinking he can make the play, but he keeps getting countered either with beads or with Medusa ult, and it's just been rough for him. So we got an Obsidian Shard, of course, finished for Emilito, and now into the Lost Artifact he goes. This spells to me a Rod of Tahuti for a major damage spike, uh, but he's about 2,500 gold away. Very, very close here to, uh, to getting the critical mass is Epsilon. Is the big items are starting to come out on both sides of the field. Yeah, exactly. The biggest thing is not only did they have the Fire Giant, but now everyone finished their pen items, and even Thor is working on his third one. Look at this. Look at Dimmy forcing away Chaos and Adjust. And they don't go for the, uh, the speed buff. In fact, it's going to be Salt Machine having to rotate over as Dimmy controls their movement. This is going to give a ton of time for Epsilon to rotate to the left side and start pushing, putting pressure on that tier two. Although, adapting on the bottom right side, he does have teleport available to him, but it seems like he's slightly out of position. He wants to push out this right side lane and try to find this tier two tower over here while the rest of the team sieges on the left side. He's going to be shot, successful. Each shot from Emilito just does so much damage to the tower with that Polynomicon. They're going to try to go in on the soul, but she does have the disapparate pop. And now will go into the incorporal form. Her ultimate gonna use as well. And Pain of Young is gonna get absolutely erased by the soul. And just gonna try to come in and make the play. But just like last time, he's gonna get isolated and killed. Jean Quay moves in as well. Chaos channeling the ultimate. It's doing good damage. And Vichy of channeling more in for the backside. Salt Machine with an opportunity to make a huge play. Adapting is about to go up. He's gonna come crashing down. Who's the target? It's gonna be all three. And two will get stunned out. Oh no. Vichy taking tons of damage. Oh no. Chaos wants to move forward. They don't Adapting have enough time for this. Again. They don't have enough time down for this. Oh, it's a deicide for Epsilon. 
squad. Can they win off of this, ladies and gentlemen? He could be your world champion. They're going in for it. The Phoenix gets tanked. They still have Fire Giant. All five members still alive. Easy game. Easy life. Epsilon. Rapper in the squad going to move in. A team that was locked out from the earlier splits will go on with one loss to defeat the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Epsilon Esports.